In this tutorial, I'll show you how to spawn objects into your world, as well as add a delay so that you can only spawn it every so often. And once you have an object spawned, you can destroy an individual one, or click a button to destroy all of them. Back in Unity, the usual scene here. I'll be using the pickup object that we created in the last tutorial as the object that we will be spawning. First thing we need to do is actually make this a prefab. So go down here in the Assets folder and create a new folder, and I'm going to call this Prefabs. Can't spell it. And going inside here, I just take this object, click it, and drag it in. And it's now a prefab. In order to be able to spawn this object into our scene, we need to tell the descriptor about it. So go into our descriptor, go down and find this dynamic prefabs list. It starts off at zero by default, but so let's just add a one there adds an object, and then take the prefab inside our assets folder and drag it in. So now that we are done setting up this prefab, I'm just going to go and turn it off. So let's set a button that will spawn our prefab. First thing we do, create a new game object. I'm going to call this buttons. I'm going to move it down to the floor for consistency. Add a cube, move it up, change the size, and I'm just going to move it over there. And this will be called button. Next, go down here, add component, VRC trigger. I'm going to add an on interact. Click the add button. And one thing to note that when we add a spawn object, this is removed. Reason for that is because spawn object is going to be forced into this always category, meaning it buffers every time it is pressed or activated. It's only important if you're doing extra things with it, which I will go over an example later. So, basic event, we are going to do spawn object. Click on that, and we have prefabs. So take our pickup and drag that into the prefab. So one thing else we can do is we can specify the location. I believe you can specify multiple locations. I've never actually done it, but we can just specify one. If you do not have any location, it will use the object that is on this trigger. So if I left this as just blank, it'll spawn the prefab exactly where this object is, or this button is. But due to colliders, it'll kind of like push it out somehow with physics. But So let's create a new empty there just for like spawning it. And I'm going to, uh, let's not make it that high. How about there? And so name this spawn location. And take that, this, add a new receiver and drag the spawn location in. And with this, we have the most basic spawn object for our scene. So here's our button. I can click it, I can spawn the object, and it's the exact same object from the last tutorial. If I click this, it's got the other piece to it. And yeah, same object. One problem with this button though, I can spam this. Well, if I can not, like, actually not pick up the object here. So yeah, that's a problem. So let's try fixing that. So as you saw, you can click the button and it'll spawn an object, but there's no limit to how many you can spawn or to how fast you can spawn them. So we need to handle how to delay or stop the user from pressing the button and spawning more objects. So first thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to duplicate the button. I'm just going to rename it to button delay. Oop, I can spell again. I'm going to move it over and now it's over on this side. And then I will also remove this action of spawning. I'll get back to this portion later. Now I'll create a new empty game object. I will call this spawn. And as with the other one, add a VRC trigger. I'm going to do this a little strange. But with this method, you can trigger it from other buttons if you wanted. I also want to make this clear that when dealing with spawn objects, you must initiate the spawn locally. Otherwise, every player in the room will all try to spawn this object. So in this trigger here, first thing we're going to do is add an on disable. I can find it here, on disable. If you do not have on disable, update your SDK to the latest one. So add on disable. Next, I will add two custom triggers. So I'll name this first custom trigger spawn, and I'll name the second custom trigger here enable. So in our on disable one up here, Go in and add basic event, activate custom trigger, and go ahead and add a second one. So inside this activate custom trigger, for the first one, add a new receiver and select itself, and we want to take it and add spawn. 
go into the second one, do the same style thing, and leave it at enable. So now inside our spawn custom trigger, we're going to go to this actions and add spawn object, just like the other one. We're going to take the pickup prefab, put that in there, take the locations, we're going to do spawn location, and that's it for the spawn. Now inside this enable, we are going to then set a basic event, active, or set game object active, and we are going to set it to true, leaving this false as it will, as this note says here, trigger this game object itself. One other thing, for this enable, I'm going to add a delay. So this delay will be how long it turns off the spawning ability for this button. So for this example, I will set it to 2 seconds. Last thing for setting up this game object here is that we need to set the broadcast types. As mentioned before, the spawn object action here removes the broadcast type as it defaults to just always. But go up here to the top in the advanced mode, I'm going to drop this down and select local. And then same for this one, local. So what this is going to do is that when this object is disabled, locally it is going to first activate this spawn, which then spawns our game object. It'll finish this, come back up here, and then activate this enable one, which then after two seconds, it will then set itself back on, which will act as our delay. So even though this trigger, this on disable one is local, this spawn object one is global. So everybody will see this, but they will not see this disable or enable. So now this is all set up, but we need to activate the trigger. Go back to our button delay up here. In our actions list, we can go ahead, set basic event, set game object active, drop this down, set it to false as we want it on turn off, and then click this, drag the spawn object in. And now, as I said with the other one, this must be local. So inside here, again, click the checkbox, change this to local. So now when one person presses this button, they will locally turn this off and set up the spawn stuff. Here's our button here, and let me see if I can emphasize my button clicking here. So, only one is spawned, only another one, and so the delay is set. Our buttons are set up, and we can spawn our objects. But there's one problem. So as of right now, we can bring an object into the world, but we can't really take it out of the world. Let's add some way to destroy our newly spawned objects. Just to save time, I've quickly made a trash can area-like thing. It's just simple cubes. To make it easier to put things in, I've just removed the colliders on the cube, so anybody can just walk through and you can put the object in. We will be using this as our way of destroying these spawned objects. For spawn objects, we cannot reference them in any of our triggers in the world, so we need to have the destroy trigger on the object itself. If the trigger is on the object itself, we still need a way to activate the trigger. We can do this with colliders and physics layers. So the physics layers are basically the layers of which objects are on, and these determine what things collide with other parts. So we could add our own layer to our object here to detect specific triggers, but we can also reuse some of the objects already in here. To find one that we can use, let's go into the editor settings and actually find out how the layers are. So if you go into edit, project settings, physics, we can see what is called the collision matrix. So this collision matrix here shows that for every layer, you can see what that layer collides with. As an example here, we can go to player local, which is U, and see that it does not collide with walkthrough, stereo right, stereo left, pick up no environment, or pick up objects themselves. For what we want to have on ours, we want to make it so that we don't want this to collide with multiple things, but we still want to be able to send it an event. So if you look at this carefully, this pickup no environment only collides with pickup objects. If we go to our prefab, it is pickup object, which means it is a good layer to just detect our pickup object. So still selecting our pickup object here, first turn it back on, go back to the bottom, and add a new event, and click on enter trigger. So add that event, I'm going to remove this set game object active, and then Press the plus sign and do event from scene. So I had to turn it on to get this in the list here, and I'm going to set it to reap object. So reap object is basically a way of saying, I want to destroy this spawn object. And so that's perfectly what we want. But now for the on enter trigger settings, we need to change the layer. I mentioned before that the pick up no environment is the one we want, so select that. Now, one interesting portion of this is that since this game object is synced, 
that means its position will be the same for everybody, which then also means we do not need to tell everybody to delete it when everyone knows it should be deleted because it is in the right location. So what I'm going to do is check advanced and go down here and set this to local. There is no point in sending a broadcast out when everybody already gets the broadcast locally. To save our prefab here, go back up to the top and click this apply button. And so now it should be saved in our prefabs. So now let's set up our trash can. Go inside, add a new game object, and I'm going to call this Collider. All this will be is a way of triggering this event. So also inside here, add a box collider. And then I'm just going to move this so that it fits the very bottom here. So 0 0.05 and then 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.5. So if I turn this off, you see it just in the bottom of our little trash area. The last thing that we need to do for our collider here is set the layer to pick up no environment and also is trigger have that checked. So our pickup object is not a trigger, but we use the on enter trigger event. So one of them needs to be a trigger, exactly one. And so this one will be the trigger, this one will be the one with the collider. So, holding the game object above the trash can, if I drop it, it kills itself. Got another one, and it also kills itself. So, our trash can here is great if you want to give each player the ability to destroy one single pickup object. Well, what if you want to destroy all of them at once? You can do that by just making our collider here pretty much cover the entire map. But you can't have it always on, as that will kill all of the pickup objects when they're created. So it'll need to be defaulted to off, and then when you want to kill everything, you just turn it on for a little bit, and then turn it back off. So let's make this kill collider. Start off by creating a new game object. I'm going to call this kill collider. I'm just going to leave it at this location because it doesn't matter. It's going to cover the entire map. Next, add a component, sphere collider. So. It's just at this location, but let's make it huge. So I'm going to set it to 100, which for you, just make it cover your entire map. You be the judge on how big that should be. And now I'm going to turn it off. Next, add a VRC trigger and go inside here and add two custom triggers. So the first one will be turn on. The second one will be turn off. And then inside our actions, we're going to do set basic event, set component active, drop this down, press the plus sign for the receiver, take our kill object, drag that in. It already selects the sphere collider, and I'm going to change this from false to true. You're turning it on. Next, do the same thing for the other one, but instead of setting it to true, we are going to set it to false, which is default. Next, go to this advanced box, click check, local and local similar to our delayed spawn object button i'm going to add another event to this first one only activate custom trigger add the receiver add itself in here and calling turn off so what we need to do is we need to turn the collider on let it sit there for a small portion of the time and then turn it off so in our delay it does not need to be long so i'm just going to set it to 0.5 and with this we are locally turning it on and then locally turning it off. Since I did these with custom triggers, we actually need a way of activating it. So let's go ahead and add a new button. I'm going to duplicate our first button over here and then move it back some. I'm going to rename it to kill button. Probably should keep the consistency here, but go inside this, remove the spawn object, change this from always to always unbuffer so that everybody gets it, but it's not buffered. And inside our actions here, basic event, activate custom trigger, click down here, inside the receivers, find the kill collider, drag that in, and turn it on. And with this, we can kill all of our bond prefabs. Two things that I forgot to mention though is on our kill collider, one, just like our trash can, set the collider to is trigger, and two, change the default layer here to pick up no environment. So I've spawned a few prefabs here, but it's time to clean up our mess. Go to the Kill Collider button and... And they're gone. That's all for this tutorial. 
As usual, these are meant to be just the basics, and I hope that you can expand off what was shown here. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you haven't done so already, I recommend joining the official VR Chat Discord, as there are many people there willing to help out. I'm typically responding to questions in the world-related channels. Until next time, thanks for watching!